Hello everyone, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition All Hikata Chronicle Berlin Bloodlines. This is our third pre-game session, Nurture. Let's meet our players, starting with Josh. Good evening, everyone. I am playing Lucius Giovanni. <laughs> Correct. Would you like to tell us who you are when uh, you're not playing Lucius Giovanni? Oh, when I'm not playing Lucius <laughs> Giovanni, I'm a community manager for a couple of different games like Bloodlines 2 and Still Waste the Deep and Clone Drone VR. I'm doing cool stuff there. Yeah. TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. I do TikTok. <laughs> Luna? Uh, hi, I'm Luna, or Druid by Night. You can find my Druid by Night on all the things. And tonight, I will be playing Imogen Giovanni. Mm -hmm. And Ramos. Hello, I'm Gilbert Ramos. I'm found everywhere at Ramos the Nomad. And tonight, I will be playing Dr. Tulio Giovanni. Not quite yet. Very soon. <laughs> And since Josh got to brag, hi, I'm Huddy. I'm a World of Darkness community ambassador and storyteller of many things. And coincidentally, your storyteller this evening. As always, this is a Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition actual play. We've gone over our safety and consent, but please check in with yourselves, as your well-being is important to all of us who are playing. And all of the content warnings for this game will be in the description. So, if you all are ready, lass uns anfangen. And let's go not to Berlin, but to Potsdam. In the quiet corners of our minds, nestled between the folds of time, lie the fragments of our existence, the whispers of moments past. Memories are the silent architects of our identity. They are the storytellers of our journey, the reservoirs of our experiences, and the mirrors that reflect the contours of our souls. But memories are not static. They morph and evolve as we do. The colors may fade, the edges may blur, but the essence always remains. We begin our scene on a night on the quiet streets of Potsdam. Two kindred and four children of the Giovanni bloodline, all between the ages of three and seven, exit a town car and walk towards the largest duplex house at the end of this Sack Gasse, or Kul de Sack, as we would say. Your uncle, Osric Dunsern, holds your hand, Tulio, as you walk, while your sister, Irma, is held in his other arm. Your aunt, Hanalora Lamia, holds you, Imogen, in her arms. Her height makes it seem like you're being carried by a giant, while your older sister, Ariana, holds her other hand. This has been a very scary and strange night for you all. Neither sets of your parents came home last night, and when some, someone finally arrived at your respective doorsteps, it was two of your many aunts and uncles who silently ushered you from your homes, leaving everything you knew behind. Osric and Hanalori remained mostly silent on the drive, but now as they walk you to this unknown house in this unknown city, they begin to whisper to one another. Osric says to Hanalori, I don't know, I don't know about this. I, I wanna trust you, but Seneca Giovanni is going to put a hit out on us. If he finds out that we're taking his children, he's going to kill us. And Hanalori, she continues her steady stride, says, um, Lila says that we must always allow the evildoer to do their wicked deeds so we can have the pleasure of, of harming them, of giving them justice. But I must believe that the Dark Mother gave me this vision about these children for a reason. I must believe that we can protect them. And then Osric looks up at her and says, Ahi hai Lilitu. And she repeats it back. As you all reach the home, four people stand at a doorway. Three women and one man. Your aunt and uncle put you down on the step in front of them. Osric takes the hand that was holding you, Tulio, and puts it in the man's hand. And Hanalori takes your hand, Imogen, puts it in the hand of one of the two women standing to the left. Your uncle looks at you, Tulio, and says, these are your parents now. Everything that you remember, forget it. 
The only thing you need to remember is that your family will always love you. And if I never see you again, we gave you the best chance. And then he goes around and kisses you all on your faces. And Hanalori kisses you both after he is done, or kisses all four of you after he is done. And she says, Guten Nacht, Kinder der Giovanni. And they leave, leaving you in this strange home with these strange people that you must now call mother. Mother, mother, mother and father. Time moves forward a few years. You've settled in your new lives, living next to each other and practically never being apart. It's a duplex home. One day, all of you are spending a rainy Saturday afternoon at Tulio's home. Pippi Langstroff is on the TV, or Pippi Longstocking, as it's called in English. Irma is braiding Imogen's hair, and Ariana and Tulio, you're playing Mensch Ere dich nicht, which is a board game, something like Sorry. When Ariana leans over to you, Tulio, and asks you to go see if you have Caprisona to drink, Tulio, ich hab Durst. Hast du Caprisona? We'll get up and uh, get her a drink. You ascend from the basement stairs and head upstairs. And as you make your way to the kitchen to go see if you have any Capri Sun, you see your father, Hotmut, standing at the door. And a very strange man is standing outside the door, talking to your father. He's hunched over, thin with greasy hair and glasses, clothes that don't fit him right and look a little dirty. And he's reaching out to your father, grabbing him by both arms and saying, you have to separate them. You have to keep them apart. Blood calls for blood. Uh, if I might deviate, i go to my father. Mm -hmm. You head to your father as he's closing the door in this person's face. It's about 8 p.m. at night. Yeah, uh, I just want to see if he's okay. It's sort of childlike curiosity here. Your father looks uh, as white as a sheet. Very, very concerned and frightened. Huh? He seems startled that you're here. Uh, Yuma, um, go back downstairs. Tell Imogen and Emma that they must collect their things. Their mothers will come and get some. They, they, they can't stay here. They have to go. Is everything okay? Nine. Do as I say. Yes, Papa. I will do just that. So she head back downstairs, and you see Imogen there, and Ariana is looking like, where's my Capri son? What do you tell them? Uh, Papa says you must, um, you must gather your things. You're going to go home, I think. Why? I don't know. Um, I will recount what I saw. A blood calls for blood? Yes, not leaving anything out. What does that mean? I don't know. I think... I think we did something wrong. I don't think so. I'll start gathering my things. You both hear your mothers come, Beatrice and Sienna. You hear them come into the house very quickly and call after you. After you and your sister. They sound panicked. I'll grab what I can, but try and remember everything. Give Strange Julio to think of having to of having to take anything. You live in a duplex house. You live right next to each other. You've right. left things here your entire life. How could you possibly remember in a span of a few minutes to grab everything that you've ever put here? Yeah, um, starting to get a little anxious. Um, give Tulio a quick hug, and one look back. Grab Ariana's hand and go upstairs. And after that, Ariana, Imogen, Beatrice, and Sienna moved away almost overnight. 
to the northernmost part of Potsdam, as far away as possible as they could be from you, Tulio, and Irma, and your parents. And even though they did this, as you aged, somehow, you still found yourselves matriculating in similar circles. Whether seeing each other at local clubs or the lake in the summer, you never fell out of contact. It was almost impossible for you all not to run in each other, into each other at some point in your lives. And it kept happening more and more frequently. And your bond only grew, despite your parents trying to keep you apart for unknown reasons. And we move forward in time, and all of you are in your 20s. Still living at home, as most German students do. Tulio, you're studying medicine in university. Ariana is working on her apprenticeship, or Ausbildung, as we say here, as a florist. Imogen is finishing her Abitur at Gymnasium, the highest level of education one must accomplish in order to enter a prestigious university here in Germany. And Irma is starting her BVJ, or Bundesfreiwilligedienst, where German students get a stipend from the government for a year's worth of charitable and humanitarian services for the local community. It's a weekend, and like so many weekends before, the four of you spent the night at a local Biergarten, having a good time, catching up, talking about your futures, what you're going to do. Every once in a while mentioning how silly it is that you had to move away and how much easier things would have been if you had just lived together like you always were and how weird your parents are sometimes, but parents are weird. All kids think that. And it's gotten quite late, and you're closest to Tulio and Irma's home. So you decide, as you have many, many, many times before, snuck into Tulio's basement to sleep for a few hours until the sun comes up, and then Imogen and Ariana, you can sneak out and head to the bus stop and head home. Parents will be none the wiser. It's no big deal. But this time, as the four of you stealth your way in through the exterior basement door of Tulio and Irma's home, the four of you are met with your parents sitting down there in the basement waiting for you. Your father, Hatmut, stands up, and he says, I thought we made ourselves perfectly clear. You are not to see each other anymore. It's difficult to avoid one another. I think you have made it a lot easier on yourself by seeking each other out. Traveling in the same circles, Papa. And Imogen? What do you have to say for yourself? I, I don't understand. I don't see why it's a big deal. It's a big deal because we said no. Venish nine saga, mine is nine. But we can't, you can't expect us to ignore each other's existence. We travel in the same circles. You hear one of Imogen's mothers, Sienna, whisper to your father. And she says, Do you think that we should call Violette? Do you think we should send one of them into Berlin? Or two of them into Berlin away from each other. And Hartmut sort of waves her away and says, no, don't do that. You're going to stay here in this basement. We're going to make some calls. We're going to fix this permanently. Fix what? Your servant told us anything about why this is such a problem. It's beyond... It's beyond what you could possibly understand, but you must believe me when I say we are trying to protect you. I believe that your idea of protection is misguided. Blood calls to blood. We will follow each other. We will eventually find each other again. You say blood calls to blood. His He looks at first frightened and then angry. Bleib here. Sag ja zu deiner Papa. Julio will fall silent. The four of them head upstairs. Now we move our scene to Lucius Giovanni, traveling in a long car. Your the person driving is your follower Cesare. You have two more followers in the back seat. As he drives, he offhandedly says, My, mein Herr, do you really believe 
the witch was right. That these Giovanni are here. The witches are often right. Yes, but witches are often uh, tricksters. Then let them play that trick. Mm -hmm. I am... I just... We have common vision, my lord. I just want to see it fulfilled. Good. And I truly need to know before we get there. Do you believe your heirs amongst these mortal Giovanni? I cannot claim to know. But we will find out. Peter Sox. Four of you down in the basement. You see a light pull up. You assume in, in the driveway, you assume it's got to be someone they've called to come give you a talking to, or maybe some other relative who's going to take one of you away for reasons you don't know that are extremely frustrating. If there's anything you'd like to discuss between the two of you right now, now is the time to do it. Do you have any idea why they're making such a big deal about this? No, I don't. And honestly, it's really, really annoying. Yeah, because if Berlin is so far away, it's at the other side of the world. Yeah. yeah. That would stop me. No regard to our studies, either. I know. This family is... ridiculous. Did you say this family is ridiculous? You hear someone yell from upstairs, a scream that bursts into the silence of the house and then is extinguished. And Julia would step in front of Imogen. Mm -hmm. Your footsteps upstairs. Eure Hoheit, Lord Lucius, would you like to say anything when you hear and see, and uh, as your followers dispatch of these humans who are not Giovanni? They, uh, as the witch told you, they are some ghouls or former blood dolls of the Keeper of Berlin. Mm. Make sure that the children cannot see them when they come through. Yes, my lord. They start dragging the bodies out into the garden. And I'm going to start very methodically, slowly searching the house, listening, seeing if I can find where these kids are. Do you have heightened senses? Um, I do not believe I do. You uh, roll me, since I uh, asked for a roll, maybe the only roll of the game, roll me uh, wits and your level of aspects. Okay. Uh, that is four successes. You five hear, successes. Five successes. You hear breathing downstairs. Mm. And so I make my way to the... Uh, the door at the top of the stairs open it and very you begin to hear the kind of clop of extremely expensive shoes on the wooden stairs all four of you can hear someone right at the top of the stairs um, and I'm not I'm going to wait until I see them to say anything from where they are you can't see them they would have to look. I continue down. The footsteps start descending the stairs. Do the four of you, or rather, I'll say the two of you, do anything? Just keep in front of Imogen and um, uh, kind of posture a bit. Trying to make myself appear larger than I am. As you stand in front of Imogen, Ariana stands in front of Irma. In the same sort of way, you two are the oldest. Yeah, I'm gonna try to place myself just a bit in front of Irma as well. And as you descend the stairs, Lucius, would you like to describe what they see? Yes, they see a man who is uh, probably around 40. He's uh, uh, quite angular features, uh, long, dark hair slicked back, 
and uh, just extremely sharp and focused with a single half cape off one shoulder to accent his exquisite black suit. And as he slowly looks all four of them in the eyes, Good night, Kinder de Giovanni. Good night. No, I think Imogen's saying anything. Ariana very boldly says, And who are you? My name is Lucius Giovanni. And I am sure that you have many, many questions, all of which I am willing to answer. You feel confused about where you came from and why you've had to hide for so long? Where are our parents? I am your father now. Papistich, get out. Hmm. It is good that you have fire in you. No ambitions. Nothing you have ever questioned about yourself or where you came from. Or what you are destined for. It's not for you to know. But I already do. I would ask you again to get out of my house. Get on your knees. And I am compelling him. And you are a mortal, and not a ghoul, and it requires no role. And Imogen, we watch the person who is trying to protect you bend down on their knees. Both knees, I am assuming you're expecting, Lucius. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, and I begin to walk towards him. What is your name, young man? I am Tulio Giovanni, and this is my home. Have you ever considered that the entirety of Berlin might be your home? These people. A lot comes with that name Giovanni, you know. I am from Potsdam. You were but it is nothing to me. And let me show you exactly what the name Giovanni can bestow upon you if you would really just reach out and seize it. Uh, and I'm going to he stood in front of Imogen, so I am going to compel Imogen mm -hmm. stand in front of me. I do. Being and, afraid. And he kind of takes you by the cheeks and like looks at your hair and your eyes. Yes, you have all inherited some of my favorite parts of our bloodline. Yes, this is providence. All of you, collect what things you would like and then get in my car. Now you have Tulio, and because of your high blood potency, I will allow. Would you like to compel all of them to do this? Uh, first I'm good, going to just ask them mm -hmm. and see what happens. Well, Tulio and Imogen will do what you say. Ariana and Irma, they look a little bit more worried, confused. Irma wants to do what Tulio is doing. She's his little sister, but Ariana's Imogen's older sister and she seems more defiant. I'm not going anywhere until you tell me where my mothers are. 
you would like an honest answer from this point forward I will give any honest answer you wish if only you accept the answer she looks at Imogen I'll go where my sister goes good So you lead them all up out of the basement and the four of you enter up into the main part of Tulio's home. You see there's three other people here. They're all dressed rather similarly to Lucius. One of them is, is female presenting, but two of them are men. And Cesare comes over to you, your second hand, and whispers in your ear, everything is cleared. There will be no issue here. Thank you. Right this way, all four of you. Two of the people don't follow. Cesare follows. Leads you all out to this very nice, expensive Mercedes town car. And I open the door for them. Mm -hmm. I'll get in kind of quickly. Just want this to be over. Now, compel forces your body to do something against its will. It has nothing to do with forcing necessarily your thoughts, your feelings, or your mind against its will. It just might be a little bit trapped and unable to express itself. What is going through the minds of Imogen and Tulio as this is happening? Let's start with Imogen. Uh, terrified. Um, mind going a mile a minute of what happened to her parents. And what's going to happen to all of them and who this person is and what he meant by um what comes with the name giovanni mm -hmm. what about you tulio i think tulio is trying to figure out a way to uh to protect everyone trying to uh push up against the compel and try to figure out how he's going to break this and get everyone out of there As all four of you pile into the town car, Lucius in the passenger seat and Cesare driving, you drive away. And we're going to move forward a few more years under Lucius Giovanni's, let's call it tutelage, to be nice. Now, Lucius, be correct in saying you have blood bonded all four of these Kinda de Giovanni? Yeah. Would you like to describe for us what type of training or what type of lessons or in general, what you have been expecting of these four new children and, 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 and how perhaps the relationship has shifted? Would you like to explain to us in any detail what you imagine that was like? I imagine it's extremely strict, all of it. Every time he sets you a task, it feels like he's loosened the leash just a, a tiniest fraction to uh, do a variety of things. Obviously, complete your studies. He finds that extremely important, um, but mostly to do a wide variety of very unusual tasks. Uh, you You would imagine, like... Uh, he gives you tasks like uh, going to a uh, a club and trying to bring someone home. But well, let's what? let's let's uh, act out one of those of those tasks to see how well they. Why don't you tell me the storyteller what your expectation is, and we'll see what plays out. Ooh, I imagine that I. Lucius has probably set up a very elaborate situation where there is essentially a pot of money that someone else has been granted by seemingly ex uh, excellent luck, and I've tasked them to take it from them. Wonderful. All right. So <clears throat> we'll say that... Um, 
someone has been granted a, a, a large donation to a conservatory here in Potsdam. It's a conservatory on the lake. It's a large amount of money. And um, it's uh, going to be uh, part of a raffle that's going to be going on. So the money is right now in a secured lockbox somewhere in the conservatory waiting for when the actual event happens. People donate, people you know buy the raffle tickets and all these things. And it's supposed to make this conservatory all the, all the better, more die Schönheit, as we would say here in Germany. But um, Lucius thinks that, uh, well, this is not the money that's necessary for this. Uh, this is um, Putinesca shit. This is um, just a, a front. This is just a funneling. And um, the Putinesca at the moment aren't working for the Giovanni. And uh, that's no good. That's no good. So he wants you to take it back because it's yours. Because it belongs to you. So Lucius one night and you know these things and your four children arrive waiting for their task for the evening and of course to sup on your blood for the month I trust that you are all healthy well prepared for the task this evening of course Good. You are allowed to call me Papa. Of course, Papa. Good girl. There is a pot of money at a very small and insignificant part of a conservatory that I require. It would go to lesser causes. All you need to do is get in, use your social skills to obtain everything you need, and return to me. It will be done, Papa. Do not be afraid to hurt people. <laughs> do you do you watch them attempt this? Um, I think he watches one part of it. He is more he's most interested in how they approach it more than their success or failure or how much they get or anything like that. So that is the part that he watches. Uh, he probably delegates that to someone else. Cesare, probably. <clears throat> so, here's how we're going to do this. I guess we are going to do dice. So, I'd like both of you to explain to me how you would approach this. Now, let me set the scene for you. This is a charity event that is uh, planning to happen, right? It uh, There are people who are filing in, things are going on, but the actual money is here. So, you'd have to get in, get it, be stealthy enough to or kill people, as Lucia said, um, to get the money out. Now, if you notice, Lucius didn't tell you exactly how he wanted it to be done. He There's always an expe a hidden expectation there. You just sort of have to guess. You have to read his mind, right? So we're going to start... Always with, a test. <laughs> always a test. So you're going to have to start... Uh, or we'll start rather with Tulio. Explain to me how you would approach this particular task. And then I'll have you make a roll. Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to... I guess it's. I would. I guess it would be kind of stealthy. Um, it would be kind of walking in like I belong, and making my way. And the money is physically here. I just need to walk out with it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna walk in like I belong there. Uh, talk to the right people and get access and learn the lingo of this building, and then walk out with some story that uh, it's being transferred to a safer location. Okay, so take a look at your sheet, roll me your dots in subterfuge, and roll me your dots in either manipulation or charisma, whichever is higher for you. And while you do that, Imogen, how would you approach this? I think um, hearing how, hearing or clocking how Tulio is doing this, she would be distracting the right people, make, turning eyes away from him, mm -hmm. um, also acting like she belongs there. And then sneaking out 
Well, walking out a little after him to not make it obvious. Okay, you can roll me wits and stealth. And we'll have we'll say that Irma is working with Tulio and Ariana is working with Imogen. And we'll see which pair is successful. How many did you roll, Tulio? How many successes did you roll? Uh, four successes. Wonderful. Uh, two successes. All right. So, Imogen, you try. And Lucius, from your vantage point, you see Imogen trying. And you see her sister Ariana trying. But it is Tulio and Irma who seem to be the much, much more capable, the much more la familia approach to this. And they successfully walk away with no harm done of this safe box. Afterwards, I would gather them all together and have the the box open and like spilled out onto a desk behind me. Um, I'm very proud of you, Tulio. And he he walks up to you and he like takes a lock of your hair and like runs his fingers through it. You are exceptionally successful. So I grant to you a reward. Is there something you would ask of me? Um, up to this point, um, a night off for all of us, Papa. Mm. Just one night. Or we can go and see the city. Berlin is off limits, I'm afraid. There are places that are too dangerous for you yet. It doesn't but, have to be Berlin. It's a night that we might all go drink, dance, enjoy one another's company. Decompression, as it were. You really do have the familiar blood running through those veins, working for everyone else, thinking how to make them happy. This will serve you well. Treat me well, Papa. Imogen, it is impossible. Oh, <laughs> Imogen, it's impossible for you not to feel feelings of jealousy in this moment. Your father is paying much more attention, uh, lauding praise on your brother that you feel is owed and due to you. And you can't help it in this moment. Look at him with jealousy and anger. I I probably encourage that. <laughs> For sure. I don't make eye contact with her. <sighs> so you are granting them this favor to go dancing and drinking. Of course. All right. So as the four of them abscond to head to a local nightclub in Potsdam, <clears throat> Cesare approaches you, bows deeply as he always does, and he says, uh, It has been a few years now since they are together. When are you going to tell them about the Shadow Bane? The item itself is immaterial to them. They only need to know a name and a location when we have it. As the prophecy says, it is your heir who will find it. And which one of his is my heir? That is Can you I, tell? This is what I'm asking. Is there, you are so wise and you have the providence on your side. Is there no test that we can do to determine which one is your heir? I have a final test in mind. But let them have tonight. I will send Adriano to go watch them. Now, how does Lucius pass his night as they may come back before when it's time for you to go to your day sleep? Do you pour over the items that you retrieve from that harbinger that you killed? Do you look, what is it that, that Lucius does? Just 
what is forefront in his mind every night every night it is it is the shadow bane mm -hmm. so i think when it gets a little bit too much you will reread mm -hmm. the the note that he took off the the dead hakata's body and then he will um try and force premonitions and reread uh, history books and and arcane texts and hair race from the shadow realm perfect so there is a wraith that you know that you did want to interrogate and as you perform your ceremony and rip him from the shadowlands somehow you must have gotten the fetter mixed up you've collected so many and your followers bring you so many and this is not the wraith that you were expecting and this wraith sits in your the chair that you have set for him and he writhes and screams in pain and uh he's all very wispy and ethereal and he has a third eye what do you call yourself <laughs> my my name i don't it's... I don't know. It's been too long. Oh, there must be so many of you on the other side, Salubri. Yes. That is what they called me. Were you just? I... I tried to be. I died fighting the Blood Witches. Now that is a worthy cause. Have you heard of a witch named Kudam? No. The witch I tried to kill his name was Anastasia. Anastasia. They called her the daughter of the first. Because then you have no chance. What implement were you trying with? I'm trying to gauge how long dead you have been. My preferred weapon, Zweihander. Hmm. It has been many hundreds of years. But the cousin. What do you want from me? Seeing as I did not expect you to be here, there is one thing that comes to mind. Any secrets you have that may help me with witches? Your bloodline is unique. Is it who you can heal? Once, well, once upon a time, yes. Teach me. Do you consume him, Lucius? As much of that soul as I can fit. Yes. With Passion Feast, you absorb him. Utterly and entirely. And his ability of Obea or Panacea or healing however you'd like to put it passes into you hmm. it's warm it feels amazing but much to your chagrin you realize you can't do it to yourself and then just because of how Lucius is, he probably considers it to have almost no use at all. I'd say so. You pour over the pages that you took from that harbinger. And of course, every time you do, you come to that one page that brought you here. The 
scribblings that say Berlin. The scribblings that say Island. The scribblings that say Person, woman in white and Shadow Bane. I repeat them to myself very softly as I pace around mm -hmm. a library. Yes, this is a beautiful manor home that you, of course, removed the previous owners of. And it is now yours. Your base of operations. A few more years pass. And the time has come now for your test. I need to ask you, have you ever told either of or any four of your children about the Shadow Bane before you give them this test? I... I imagine it was part of a test. You probably would have framed it as a reward to see if they can well, learn anything themselves, but yeah. Well, then let's make it another roll-off. I need an intelligence and occult roll from both Tulio and Imogen. And that would have been a very, very late... Mm -hmm. I would say maybe the training. night before the test. Yes. There's uh, six successes on my part. Mm -hmm. Well, Tulio, who's daddy's favorite? Five. He has to say it himself. Five successes. That close of a margin, I would say that this is almost going to force your hand, Lucius. This is going to force the test. Maybe there was a part of you that <clears throat> could see use in all four of them and that maybe the test wouldn't be necessary, that maybe naturally your heir would come to to the forefront. But both of them come back with very similar information about the Shadow Bane. And specifically, what they come back with is they come back with, um, in this particular library, the test, of course, was they did not have to look far for it. And in this library, they find a journal written by Seneca Giovanni about Augustus Giovanni, the former head of your clan, and his plan to tear down the shroud and how it failed. But the shadow bane, the shadow bane is the key. Congratulations, all of you. This has made a very uncomfortable situation for me. Learn your birthrights. I feel your reluctance. Besides the boxes, you will find tools. Tools that I've been reluctant to give to you before now. And there's four different boxes that he has lined up in front of each of you. There is only space for those who are truly willing to take it. Open your boxes. Do this. I'll what? do it. All four of them open the boxes, and what do they find inside? Knives. Ariana picks up one of the knives and she says, Papa, who are we killing? Your sibling. Unfortunately, Irma struggles she looks confused and scared and looks at you, Tulio, but Ariana does not. And Ariana immediately takes a lunge at you, Imogen. Dex Athletics. Oh, Lord. What about you, Tulio? I think he would look at the knife in his hands and then looking at Irma and then seeing 
Ariana and Imogen struggle. He's just kind of frozen. Uh, five with the crit. Mm -hmm. Very easily you watch Imogen dodge out of the way, over the table, knocking some of your books over. Lucius, do you, where do you place yourself in this room? Uh, I think he places himself quite close to the, uh, to the actual kids, like, mm -hmm. uh, so that he can observe the, the supposed fight. Uh, but he is between them and the door. Mm -hmm. Imogen, another roll. She swiped at you before you could grab a knife for yourself out of the box. Strength and brawl to try and get it from her. Irma looks at you, Tulio, and she hands her knife to you. And she says, It's okay. You do it for Papa. He will take the knife um, and just kind of whisper no. Imogen, what did you roll? Four. Four. You wrestle with the knife from her and you grab it from her. Cut her hands as you do and she starts bleeding. And I have a very important question. Do you attack? I do. Strength, uh, dex and melee. Or strength and melee, whichever's higher for you. Irma gets on her knees, grabs onto the coats of your shirt, or of your blazer, and she says, Because if you don't do this, so kill us both. Look at Imogen, look at Ariana, they're killing each other. She'll kill us next. I will look to Lucius. Um... both knives in hand and just um how is imminent how's imogen faring if i might ask oh well, that's an excellent question how many dice uh one well she lunges for her sister ariana who holds up one of lucius's books to block it and now they are going to be entangled brawl to brawl hand to hand another roll imogen strength and brawl they are not pulling holding any punches these our sisters, you've known them your entire lives, and all it took was a command from Lucius to kill each other, and they are. Use your advantage, Imogen. Lucius, how are you feeling about this as a, compared to Tulio's reluct Tulio and Irma's reluctance? Oh, he is reveling in the fight between uh, the the sisters. Mm -hmm. Tulio, what yep. is your what is your plan of action? Uh, I think I think that kind of depends on on you, uh, depending on the blood bond. Um, I think that he's going to rush Lucius with the knives. In order to be able to do that, I would need a willpower roll, and it would have to be significant. You can certainly try. Just roll your unspent willpower. Um, if you get a margin close enough, I'll let you go for that right uh this is a bad idea imagine how many did you roll two two so you pin ariana down you're on top of her you have your hands around her throat she is a ghoul though so simple strangling might take a little while i will let you decide how you attempt to kill her you can grab the knife that would clatter it away it's closest to you there's also pieces of brick in this library that have fallen away repairs that Lucius has not done and very very heavy books which item would you like to use to bash in your sister's skull um probably the brick another strength and brawl please see how gruesome it is what about you Tulio okay. uh that is uh Five successes with a crit. I will allow you to get right up to Lucius. Right up to his face. But any plans you had after that cease. And Lucius, you may take an action or say anything. You see him do this. You know what he's doing. 
I'm yeah, I'm gonna look him right up in the eye and not move and just ask him what would you like to do, my son? will never kill her for you. It will never be me. If you want her blood spilled by my hand, it will be you. You will fail in this endeavor. Are you angry at me? I would kill you myself if not for the love that I bear you. Do you love your family? than you could ever know. You are a failure. As you say that, Imogen, how many successes? One. I think there's a lot of hesitation. Mm -hmm. So you hit her across the head with a brick and it digs down into her skull, but she's not dead yet. She starts foaming blood at the mouth. She starts spasming under your body. She's in a lot of pain, writhing, can't move properly anymore. Lucius, you see this. And of course, Tulio, you hear this. I just gently move Tulio out the way and walk over to Imogen. Mm -hmm. And I help her up and I take the brick out of her hand and hold her hands. You, you are my success. Daughter, how do you feel? I think, I think, I think um, Imogen is just crying and wild-eyed, not really knowing what to say. I would like to use, is it Opia to come? Panacea. Mm -hmm. Panacea. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think you'd have to do any rolls for that. Shh, shh. Not, not saying this disparagingly, but she's only a ghoul. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, as Lucius holds your hands, Imogen, you feel this warm, calming light pass from them into you and bloom up your chest and into your mind, and you feel very much at ease and almost okay with what you did as your sister screams and writhes, gurgles at your feet. Did I, did I do good? Did I do well? You did the best. And you will be rewarded. And that is when I embrace her. Tulio, you watch this happen. You watch your father pick Imogen over you. Drain the life from her. Imogen's amazing. You've never felt so good in your life. And as this is happening, you know Ariana is still alive, in pain, struggling, dying at your feet, but you don't care. And Lucius, where do you feed her from? when you embrace her? My neck. Cuts open his neck with his nail, presses you against it, and you drink deep and ri drink deep of his rich Giovanni blood. And that is the night you become kindred. Is anyone going to do anything about Ariana, or is she going to remain there until she passes away? I think, uh... In the moment, Tulio is clutching Irma, kind of keeping her eyes uh, away from the scene. Irma is weeping, shaking. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll whisper in her ear, don't look. She doesn't want to, but she can't not hear it. I will take the knife and leave her side and uh, to silence the gurgling I will 
and plunge it into Ariana's heart. And Lucius, you see this as well? Maybe there's hope for him still. And I will return to Irma and just clutch her. Perhaps we can put that love for your family to good use. It is time you learned more, more deeply of your Hakata. Brothers, sisters, cousins. They need uniting, you know. Someone like you they would absolutely adore. So handsome, charismatic, enigmatic, fiery. I failed you. Yes. But you have one chance. I will take this, these memories, this pain away from you. And you went to Berlin. Irma will be mine. As your punishment. You will have to earn her freedom. You will keep her safe. I keep all of the Giovanni safe. As will you. They killed us. Almost all of us, you know. Which is honestly for the best. There were so many with this godforsaken name. All of them underperformers. But we will be the best. If only you can prove it. What of Imogen? Imogen has earned her freedom. And fate will put us all in our places. Yes, Mama. You may hate me now, but you will find a life for yourself. Imogen, how do you feel? Wonderful, Papa. Tell that to Tulio. She'll turn to Tulio. This is unlike anything. This is perfection. You can see that she doesn't breathe. You. you can see that she doesn't breathe, Tulio. And her beautiful long fangs. Julio will um, walk up to her and just kind of look at her. I think he's looking for any sign that she's uh, she's free. Sorry, I couldn't save you. I don't need saving. Tulio, you are to join her. And I lunge. And I grab his throat. And I pull him in to embrace him as well. And just like with Imogen, it's amazing. You feel wonderful. Irma, Ariana, Imogen, who cares? This is all about you right now. And you've never felt better in your entire life. And as the life drains out of you, and Lucius brings you to that same open wound on his neck, still present, and feeds you his blood, you join Imogen in undeath. I think you probably taste a mixture of pride and disappointment. Oh, that's rough. 
He drinks very deeply. <laughs> Cesare is almost vibrating behind you, trying to... You can hear the flurry of papers in his hand as he's crinkling them back and forth. Uh, I let Julio drop um, and turn around to Cesare. Will you stop? Oh, I, I just I've poured through the papers mm -hmm. your heir will find the shadow bane but not if they are looking that is what this Latin text means and how should they look I don't know but it is prophecy the harbinger had it for a reason, wrote these things down for a reason. Very well. Then they shall go in blind. The two of you. It is safe to say, for me, that I will remove all of your memories. Save some select ones. Is there anything you would like to use them for before they disappear? I think Imogen would just look to Tulio and then look back and just not say, not know what to say. Uh, Tulio will pull her in and hug her close. And if possible, whisper in her ear. Um, I will find you. I'll find you. Lucius, would you like to use the forgetful mind? Yes, please. Uh, and I would... And he, as he does it, he pronounces that providence lead us to our destinies. And then he uses forgetful mind. Who would you like to start with? Uh, Tulio. Tulio, the memories that he removes from you is the memory of Osric and Hanalori bringing you to Potsdam, the memory of who your parents were before that night, the memory of Imogen and Ariana. The memory of this night. The memory of exactly what you know about the Shadow Bane. All that remains is the name Shadow Bane. And that Lucius Giovanni, your sire and your father, won it back. For you, Imogen, he removes the same memories who your parents were, who your adoptive parents were, Osric and Hanalori. But he does not remove the pride that he felt when you killed your sister for all intents and purposes. That remains. But he does remove, remove from you the word Shadow Bane. You don't know it. You've never heard of it. And you don't know what it means or what it's for. A test, even at the very end of all of this. One of you knows one of you doesn't. As you sit there and stand there in your stupor, Cesare says, uh, I will I will take Imogen to Kreuzberg in, in Berlin. I know that the Baharis there have, a, uh, have a, a small temple. I'm sure they will take her in and she will work from inside. Tulio, I believe we should wait a little longer. He needs more instructions. That's this was. He defied you, even with the blood bond. It is. Perhaps with his memories removed, things will be a little bit easier for him. And in a few years, we can release him into Potsdam, into Berlin. He would be guided. Yes, and we will have Emma as his short leash. Hmm. Perhaps one of the Dunsterns. Ah, oh, yeah. 
I have heard the stories coming out of Berlin. They are uniting all of these clans of deaths, exactly as the prophecy said. The woman, Olivia Dunson, seems to be leading them. We will see which of them are failures. But, Eurohoheit, I must say, we must not discount the dead one. She still that could is, be your heir. That is a reward. I'm a general. Richly deserve this when I also act. Yes. I will start the process of getting the family falling under your command. Alexander Nagaraja owes me a favor. And I will make sure that uh, he's brought in somehow. Perhaps under the guise of destroying this body. They always did enjoy that. Yes, the flesh eaters always did enjoy that. I must remain hidden. I will make sure that it's these two do not learn of me or do not contact me when I do not wish it. I will take care of that for you, or your heart. Everything is coming as the prophecy said in one night. The crown of shadows will sit upon the throne of the underworld. And his heir will bring Berlin to its knees. Good. I can feel providence in the air. I, I believe when they find each other, something will spark something somewhere. Yes. Yes. Send Imogen. Cesare leaves your side and walks over to Imogen. You're still in a stupor, in a fog. You don't remember. And how, where, what, where are you? What's what's going on? And then you remember that you did kill Ariana. But there's no time for you to look back. You're already being ushered out of wherever it is that you were. Away from your sire, Lucius, who you do remember. And into a car. Driven by someone you don't know. And Tulio, you watch her leave, but it's just the back of her head. And you don't know who that is. Who is she? Where is she going? Was she always here? And who is the dead body on the ground? Did she kill her? Is that was she being punished, taken away? Impossible for you to know. And as we move forward, again in your memory, we move forward to the year 2024, where both you and Tulio awake from your day sleep, your eyes snap open. But based on our previous session, Imogen, when your eyes snap open, it is only you that remembers all the memories of this session flood into your mind, where for you, Tulio, they evaporate as soon as the day recedes and the moon rises. But Imogen, the veil is lifted. You know who you are. You know who Tulio is. You remember everything. And that is where we are going to end. Session three, nurture for this evening. Thank you, everyone.